Hey y'all, do you want some more flavor in that homemade kombucha? Stick around and we'll talk about second ferments. Also, do you have lots of scobies that you need to do something with? I'll give you some tips and tricks on what to do with all of those. So let's talk second ferments. The only reason you wanna do second ferments is if you wanna add flavor and more bubbles to your kombucha. You don't need many supplies to do your second ferment. All you need is your kombucha that you've just made a couple weeks ago, your fruit or your juice, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and your bottles. So the bottles that I like to use are these cute little soda pop bottles. They're fun to pop open and act like you're drinking an old timey soda pop, and it also does a good job on the second ferment to keep it firmly in place while it is sitting up on your counter or wherever you're gonna put them. And I will link below in the description where we got these. So today we're gonna to use organic strawberries. You can either use uh, any kind of fresh fruit. You can use uh, juice, whatever flavor juice you like. Preferably, you know, keep them organic. It's just better for you. And I just make them in small pieces because all you're gonna do is put them in the soda pop. And if you're using juice, put maybe, you know, a fourth of a cup of juice. Um, if I'm using fresh berries, I put quite a bit in the bottom. Like I'll probably still cut up another one or two and put that in there. You can crush it even if you want to. <laughs> Not doing a very good job of getting them in there. But you can, you know, crush them. You can leave them in pieces. Um, because whenever you get done with it, if your family likes to drink it with the pieces, then they can totally just eat the pieces too, you know, um, or they can strain it and just eat it without the pieces. That's all a personal preference. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna keep these tops and put these aside and they will go to our worms. So next we're gonna put our kombucha into our bottles. And one thing you wanna know is if you're going to do a second ferment, you wanna stop your kombucha when it's still on the sugary side. Because in order for the carbonation to come in your second ferment, it still needs the sugar to eat to keep that fermentation going. And so the sugar that's in here is going to make those nice carbonated bubbles in your second ferment. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the new scoby that was made on this kombucha, because I like to use the newest formed scoby to make my next, next batch of kombucha because it will make it better. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and pour my kombucha in here. It just gives me a wider opening to do what I need to do. I'm gonna just leave that. Now here is our old scoby and I'm gonna put it in this bowl and we will deal with that in a second. So we wanna be sure that we keep a cup of that kombucha that was made to go with our new SCOBY to make our next batch. And then what I've done is here's this cute little pop-out funnel because it also I can stick it in here. It just makes it easier. Okay, nice and, and then I'm gonna just take this and carefully pour my kombucha into the bottles. Carefully. <laughs> it's okay if you make a mess. It's what happens in the kitchens, isn't it? Like we can. I like to leave kind of the whole neck open. You can, well, we can maybe put a little bit more in there. But you want to leave a, enough room in the top for there to be some air so you don't get it exploding. And you just take it out and you put the top on it. And you want to set this at the same place where you have all your other kombucha brewing. And just know that you want to use good quality bottles. Now I have never had this happen, but it is a possibility that these could explode as they ferment just because you have them closed and it's making carbonation. But again, good quality bottles and you shouldn't have a problem. And that's why also you wanna leave this room in the top. And so you'll leave this to set for five days to three weeks. You just wanna keep checking it because as soon as there's enough carbonation for what you and your family like, then you stop. 
and you put them in the fridge and they are there to enjoy whenever you want to enjoy them. I have a confession. My scobies may have become insanely ridiculous. I have way too many right now. And so if you're in the same boat or if you just have a couple of extra ones, I'm gonna show you what you can do with them. And the rest of the video will be spent on making a scoby hotel, blending your scoby for your garden and making a scoby snack for your dogs. Hey guys, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps with the algorithm and also gives us motivation to come up with new homesteading content that we can bring to you each and every week. Here's our scoby from earlier. And what I'm going to do is I really only want to keep the thin scobies for our scoby hotel. Some of these are pretty, are pretty thick because they've been here for a while and I'm going to put those aside for our scoby snack. Now that I've gone through all of my scobies, I kept only the ones that I would like to put in my scoby hotel. And they're really just um, the ones that are the newest that I know are in the best shape. So I'm just gonna take them and put them in a little bit of the already brewed kombucha that was in the jars. And that's it. And then you want to refresh it with freshly made really all this is is the freshly made sugar tea that you make whenever you're going to make a normal batch of kombucha so i'm just going to put that in there to refresh it and actually i'm going to go fill this up uh, probably one more time just with good filtered water and that's all it takes to make your scoby hotel just put it wherever you keep your other kombucha that you're brewing. And when you're ready to make a new batch, you take a scoby out, you take a cup of kombucha out, and you make a new batch. Next is scoby jerky. But I like to say scoby snacks because it's actually going to our puppy. And to prepare the scobies for the dehydrator, I just like to cut them in thin strips. And if you have a scoby, that went too long and that only means that you know it gets real thick like here's a real thick one um, you can just cut them in even thinner slices because you just want them to be able to you know you don't want them to take 24 hours to dehydrate so i just like to keep them about this size and i just um, put them on a napkin or a paper towel whatever you have and you just don't want them juicy and because that's just gonna mess up your dehydrator when you go to put them in if they're all real juicy. So here's our dehydrator tray and you just lay them out like you would any other thing that you're gonna dehydrate. And we'll take it to the dehydrator and show you how long and what time. So we just bring them to our dehydrator and slide them in. And we have the Excalibur food dehydrator and I really like it because it's got a good range of temperatures. So what we're gonna do for your dehydrator jerky is we're gonna put it on a temperature of 105 and we're going to set it for eight, really eight to nine hours. And that's it. So here's our scoby snacks. Now I checked these at seven hours because yours might still be stuck on here. I took these at seven hours because I wanted to see how they were. And I went ahead and let them go another two hours. So mine have gone a total of nine hours. And you can see that they went completely flat and they are not crispy, but they are pliable, which is a perfect snack for your puppy. And lastly, let's do our puree for the garden. So all you're gonna do is take your, your scobies and you're gonna cut them in strips just because it makes the blending easier. And then you're gonna put them in your blender with some water and blend them up until they're like a smooth paste. And then you can put them in whatever container you want to. And once they're in your container, you take them out to the garden and you mix it with soil. So that's it guys. I hope you like our kombucha part two. And we will be adding more kitchen stuff to our homestead videos. So if you want to see those homestead videos as well as in the kitchen, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And if you're wondering about those worms that I talked about earlier, 
make sure to see our vermicompost video.